Good morning. It is March 10th, 2023. This is Turf Team Times. We are back. Uh, we did think based on how the weather forecast and what was going on about two weeks ago that that might be a timely occurrence. Uh, and most of, us say, most of us would say that it's still probably a timely occurrence. However, the fact that there's snow falling in the northern part of the state and it's not exactly balmy tropical in the southern part of the state, people are probably wondering, are you too early? But however, we are here online today. We've got Dr. Dave Gardner, Dr. Tyler Carr, and the infamous Todd Hicks. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Turfgrass Team Times for 2023. And if you remember, we will start with uh, kind of a seasonal approach. So we won't be here every week until we get into the heat of the battle, usually around um, Memorial Day weekend. And then we will be here weekly after that, all the way through Labor Day weekend. And then it will also depend on the season as it goes. Uh, things to be aware of. Um, you need to reach out to us if you have questions. Not that we have all the answers, but if you have questions and you would like to have them given consideration, uh, please feel, to re feel free to reach out to us, whether it's Weed related, disease related, insect related, environmental related. Uh, we are here to help you. And so there will be a range of emails put up uh, during one of our uh, presentations for you to use in that instance. Uh, these videos are recorded and uh, posted on our YouTube channel. Um, so again, you can go back and refresh uh, anything that you have forgotten. Uh, just from the agronomic standpoint, any of the damage that we seem to have come across uh, due to the cold temperatures around Christmas Eve um, and the wind damage, uh, seems like we've got some recovery underway for courses up in the northern part of the state. Um, and anyone that put a cover out recently has had some uh, very nice results. So uh, hopefully people are starting to see a, a return to what might look like green grass. Uh, looking forward, uh, I guess we're going to start to see some pretty decent growing conditions. So uh, I guess the season is going to come quicker rather than later, and we got to be ready. With that in mind, Mr. Todd Hicks. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the first 13 times. As far as diseases so far this year, it's been rather mild and a little surprising on one hand. Uh, Mild-wise, our peak snow mold. It seemed to come on strong for a little bit. Uh, and then with these variable temperatures we've been experiencing, it's kind of waned and went away and red thread has replaced it. So anywhere you've been susceptible to red thread or have had that problem before, it is surely showing its head right now. Um, those two diseases will flip back and forth as this weather changes. Looking at the 10 day forecast towards the end of the month, we're supposed to get even colder and maybe a little more wet and or snow. So I look for the red thread to maybe shut down a little bit, maybe snow mold to pick back up. Um, both of those are kind of influential diseases. They're not that big of a problem, and they usually go away with the weather. The problem I see right now is our turf may be a little weak if we're not out there checking our roots and seeing what our roots look like. Um, our, root, our, our growth may start out and not have a lot of gas in the tank, as it were, or depending on what our roots look like. And these diseases will hit hard and fast. And if we stay cold and wet, we're going to deal with them for quite a while. So something to think about, maybe taking some precautions, uh, looking at those diseases in the long term. But that's it so far for disease, was Ed? Thanks, Todd. And for any, anyone that's seen our pictures pop up after the new research screen, uh, looks like we had some cool season brown patch under the cover, not uh, exposed to the environment. So the cover obviously modified the conditions to lead to that. So um, we're moving on from there. All right, up next, Dr. Gardner. Good morning, everybody. Let me go ahead and get my presentation up and running. So I thought I would show a couple of pictures of snow mold in case you missed that because we haven't really seen any this year, right? Um, you know, like per what Todd was just talking about, there's still maybe a chance, but uh, um, February of this year was the second time ever that uh, we had really no measurable snow in Columbus. We had a trace. And so it's kind of hard to have, especially gray snow mold if you don't have snow, right? Um, Speaking of that, the winter, you probably noticed that it was kind of mild. This is a map that shows hardiness zone. So that's based on the minimum temperature. And 
Um, you know, right now they say that we're zone six. We used to be zone five, and then they decided that we were zone six. But if you look, actually, um, we've been more like zone seven here of late um, because the um, average annual minimum temperature, like I said, that, that that's based on a 30 year average, how they assign those zones. And if anything, um, you see that um, as um, you know, like we've gone over time, the, the low temperature has been more like 10 above zero, which is more like zone uh, eight, or, or at least above zero, which is zone seven. Um, you remember that we had that freakish weather in December, right around Christmas time. So that's the first time that it's been below zero since 2019. Um, but if you look at um, this is this is basically a chart that shows the average temperature in the month of December, January, and February for the last 27 years, just to show that this last winter was by far and away um, the warmest that we've had. Um, you, you know, the average is 32. This year, the average was 37. So, you know, like saying it one way every day was five degrees warmer than um, you would expect. But I guess another way of saying that is that the average temperature in November and March is more like the low 40s. And so our winter time this year was more like what you would expect in uh, November and March. So were it not for this freakish storm that we had around Christmas time, see, these were the only times that the temperature went below um, 12 degrees because the low in January was 15, the low in February was 12. Were it not for these four days, um, the average for winter would have actually been 38.9, which I think would have been about the warmest that we've ever had. As it is, it's still in the top five. Now, the ramp, the, the, the question then becomes, and I've had a couple of people ask this, is, is what does the warm winter mean for the agronomics of controlling weeds this spring? And um, my most honest answer based on observations that I've made over the last uh, 30 years is nothing. Um, the the weather that you have in the winter time bears no impact on uh, the timing of weed emergence or recommended control. Um, the weather that we have in March and in April is much more important in determining when crabgrass is going to first emerge. The fact that we had a mild winter really doesn't have an impact on that. So I still recommend um, if you're trying to optimize your control with pre-emergence herbicides to put them out when you see this shrub forsythia in bloom, which is typically between April 1 and April 15. Now, the um, ornamentals have been pushed a little bit um, because of the mild winter. So you, you've started to see some things in bloom like Cornelian cherry dogwoods and the occasional magnolia, but that's all going to be in suspended animation here soon because uh, the next three weeks are supposed to be not the greatest. So um, Weather-wise, I would still think that we're talking about seeing forsythia blooming the start of April, which again is when you should put out your pre-emerge if you're trying to optimize control. So prodiamine and all others when forsythia finishes bloom and the two-inch soil temperature is about 50 degrees. Dithiopyr, the liquid form you can put out a little later, right, until you see crabgrass at the one to two leaf stage. So that's even, you know, like late April, the start of May. Um, if it's granular dithiopyr, that does have to go out pre-emergence, but the liquid does have early post-activity. Um, you're probably starting to see these weeds getting up and um, uh, growing and even sending out the occasional flower too, especially the hairy bittercress. So winter annuals are kind of annoying. Um, the winter annuals that you see now have hardened off due to wintertime stress, even though it was a mild winter. And so control is going to be pretty difficult. I would recommend using the nicest herbicide that you can afford, preferably a four-way formulation um, that includes a Protox inhibitor, and also make sure that there's at least one ester um, in that formulation. Those are going to typically work better um, on those weeds, and especially in cooler times of the year. Speaking of a herbicide that works a little bit better in cooler weather, Defender herbicide, which contains the active florazolam. The weed control spectrum of this one active ingredient is a little bit narrow. It's dandelion, white clover, and the winter annuals, but that should be the weeds that you're having a problem with right now. Um, and actually, if you time this correctly, uh, and I've seen this, I've actually done this, you can, you can actually suppress dandelion bloom with this product. So you know how sometimes when you put out a phenoxion dandelions and it blooms anyway, which is kind of annoying, this one will actually prevent dandelions from blooming while it's you know uh, doing its thing, killing the weed too. Um, did get some questions also about these. So wild onion, wild garlic. So these are um, monocots, but they're not grasses. And so the herbicide recommendations are kind of tricky. 
Q4D is something that's usually recommended, even though that's a broadleaf herbicide. But sulfentrazone, dismiss herbicide, is something that can also be utilized. And if you're trying to get best control, maybe you find a combination herbicide that contains both 2,4-D and sulfentrazone. Um, that's in turf. If it's in ornamental beds, uh, sulfentrazone is really your only choice. And that's only if you see the wild onion or wild garlic away from the ornamentals because sulfentrazone has to be used as a directed spray in that environment. Yeah, that's what I have for today. Thanks, David. That was very emotional. All right, Dr. Tyler Carr. Our yeah. Well, I'm glad to be on my my second one of uh, these turf team times. First one since I've officially been on payroll, so it's uh, good to be with a, a good company. So last week, well, that was last week, we had grounds and greens. Um, we had a good turnout, about 150 people on site. Um, that good turnout was in large part due to uh, the overflow we had with the BEST program. We had a, a one-day BEST certification. Um, and so that is a, that's something that we offer, you know, in person at times, but it's also a member benefit, um, and days like today, you know, I got wet outside walking my dog, um, be a good day to co go inside and get some of the new guys on the crew, some training, um, and you can do that online, uh, as an OTF member, it's included in the membership. Um, Lori sent out a survey after the event. Uh, probably Wednesday of last week, uh, Wednesday or Thursday. And so if you attended, please fill out that survey. That'll help us improve these events um, moving forward. Uh, another thing is that we have um, our OTF conference and show scheduled for December 4th through 7th this year. Um, and we're already underway trying to get that program um, started. And Starting next month, we're going to have some listening sessions with different industry groups. So keep an eye out um, on your email for for information about that for for golf, um, lawn care, sports turf. Um, part of that as well. If you can't make it, we're going to we're going to survey you to death and keep sending uh, other surveys so that even if you can't make it either in person or over Zoom, you're able to uh, provide feedback. Um, speaking of another survey, we have our um, field days uh, scheduled. August 1 is the OTF field day. August 2nd is the OLCA field day. Um, as part of a recent collaboration with Kansas State University and 11 other institutions, um, they're going to they're we're going to be distributing um, surveys at this event and the conference. Uh, the field days and the conference uh, to get a better understanding of, uh, you know, how you currently use extension services and how you would like to use them in the future. So this will help us again, kind of focus in how we're delivering content to everybody. Um, and so another thing that is very recent to us, and I just shared with the group before we got on here, is that we have a new uh, turf website, a new Buckeye turf website. In development. Um, so this would be a one-stop shop for all things personnel, um, curriculum, extension, outreach, and, and research. And so this would this would be a great addition um, to our to our program. Um, and I guess the last thing I have is I'm going to share the screen. This is some contact information for. Uh, individuals in our program, uh, both including uh, the Worcester and Columbus campuses, we have also Twitter accounts for, for you to follow. So if you have any, any questions, these are our, our contacts. You can reach out through email or, or on Twitter. Um, and we're going to share some, some cool, relevant information, continue to do so through these channels. So Ed, I'll do you have anything you're wanting to share or do you want me to leave this up? No, we can, we can leave that up. That's, that's a, a viable, uh, viable piece of information on there. Uh, with that folks, we will wrap it up. We'll be back in two weeks time. 
Um, the idea would be that, again, uh, we're not quite into the heat of the battle of the season, so trying to provide weekly information is not going to be worthwhile. Uh, but we will be back in two weeks' time, and if you have anything that pops up in the meantime, feel free to reach out to us, and uh, we will do our best to answer those questions. Thank you. Thanks, guys.